and try to keep my tummy small. <laughs> Welcome to Sustainable Sailing, the garden project to stretch the or take the constructional shrinkage out of our shrouds. We have here a simulated mast tang. So you've got a FR4 um, disc and the shroud around it with the anti-chafe bolted to a plate which is then secured with a really beautiful bit of bent bar um, because we found otherwise... Well, the mouldy bit on the outside yeah. is just a protection from chafe. The, this plate can just tear through the timber if it's not bolted multiple times. That's essentially the top of the shroud and then all the way down here bottom of the shroud has a low friction loop and we are this is what would be the chain plate loop here in fact we've just inserted the scale and lashings and so on um, between the shroud and the chain plate loop so here's a chain plate loop it's actually been outside for a very long time uh, left just, in there a so a close up so bit of close up shows that it's just got oh, a little a bit, bit of green. green but it also has sun shave protect um, rubber at the back to as the they will on the yeah. boat so when we first did this experiment we wanted to see how all of that was going to perform and it has done quite well it does look like it might be coming it's, through the wood a bit the wood's been out for a while the, it's all been a rather overgrown through the winter. We did a no mow May, which lasted until the end of August. We've got this little very high tech measuring stick here. So you can see how this one has so far stretched from there to there. And that is currently sitting at 1048. I'm um, not sure if it shows up very well on the camera, but it's that's what it's saying. 1048. We took it up to about 1200 and have left it for about half an hour now. To try to tension it, we've used multiple low friction rings to try to keep the, the friction down. So we've got um, three in there, so that should be six. That comes up here, all the way through that low friction ring. So that one's doubling it because it comes back to this point here, which is just essentially a strong point that's anchored back here to another low friction ring. On our latest, latest design. Yeah, and that means that we can just take up slack in this whenever we retension it to adjust for different length shrouds. And mm. up here, we've got... Uh, Pull along now. Mark ten is um, <laughs> not be really quite that many. Anchored again with a chain plate loop. Um, we were anchoring, we were anchoring it, it to on the one legs, of the posts, which, as you can see, has got rather a, bent. Yes, it suffered a bit, so not. So like anchoring it to the chain plate loop is much much better. And it's much more in line, which does help yeah. quite a lot. As we're well. struggling to stop this spinning and twisting as we this wire Th that is one of the key ways in which there's extra friction in the system all the time B which is why this scale's just gone off if i just do a click what does it say oops one click that one's now reading 650 so we're only getting <laughs> sorry for the camera yeah we're only getting about a doubling of the pull, which is ridiculous for how many um, twos and throws we've got. Dave finds this very frustrating. I think providing it reaches the amount we need, well, it's working. And yeah. I would say that the general wooden structure is not able to take. We, we tested it before to quite a lot higher and it was, it was on its, the wooden structure was on its limit by the time we'd done that. So. Yeah, what we should have done when we built it is this nine by two timber should have been the sides and the two before timber should have been the base and then mm. we would have um, got a lot more that resistance worked. to bending 
However, it has it has got us this far, so yeah. Hey ho. Right. So that shroud has been sitting for over half an hour, um, and is now well. I mean, you can play a nice tune on it. Well, if you can get it to move. If you like move. a bass guitar. <laughs> so we'll slacken that one off and we'll show you rigging up the next line. We've now completed four of the eight shrouds for the mizzen mast. Let's just do this one. So it hooks on to this mast tang. Just get the leaf rich, the chafe protection. We are going underneath this dynema which just acts as a safety if the uh, anything broke that would just stop it flying up as does that don't need a drill bit there at the moment right so that's that one we put an aeroplane in the sky <laughs> And now the trick is to try to not tangle and get no crossovers in the low friction rings. This is in this low friction ring, they keep getting crossed over hmm. and that's the key cause, I think, of the friction. Hit this end I've put two low friction rings so that we can avoid the line jamming on itself as much. And then put this through in the same direction as that pull. Really that low friction ring I would now say is not large enough for the number, of, the number turns. of turns we want on this line. <laughs> right, that comes to there. I'm going to put a low friction ring in there. And now we want to create a multi-part. So because this shroud is shorter, with the longer shroud, that one actually reached through there and came back. It doesn't now, so we're going to use this light line to create I won't go through that. some purchase onto that there. So basically every shroud we end up having to Re rethink a little it. bit. Mm. That will go on there. If we start from here, it should be the anchor. We'll go through there. The ring. Through. Um, let me just step there. over, Dave, because you keep being in the way. Hang on. Right, that's better. Through there, and then we'll take and tie these two off at the low friction ring. Obviously not an ideal locking mechanism because the low friction ring is not very grippy and neither is Dyneema, but it seems that a round turn two half hitches generally is enough to hold. Well, round turn three half inches or even four half inches. No. Right, that scale's minus 18, so that's basically zero. Shall I put the stick, the measuring stick? Oh, well, let's put the measuring stick in the right put place. The measuring yeah. stick in the right place. I can't see where we've put the pen. Okay, I'm going to try tensioning that up now. What's on that?
This is quite boring to watch, but fairly scary to be part of. Although we've done it so many times now, I'm less nervous, although the state of the wood does worry me slightly. 100. Sorry? We've got to 100. There's a lot of taking the slack out to start yes, with. Yes, there was a lot of slack. You can see that the... We don't seem to have as many twists at this end this time. Yeah, the lines are moving nicely over each other at the moment. So I'm on um, 250. And we're on 400, so, oh dear. Not great, but... Hey ho. At least the, the new chain plate knot's not stretching this time. That helps. We reached a thousand. Pardon? Thousand, one hundred. Six thirty. We always seem to be about the same figure. Two hundred. One three hundred. It's the ominous creaking noises from the woods that always worry me. Hmm. Right, what do we go up to? One three hundred. Well, one four hundred now. Four fourteen hundred. Yes. Okay, and when you hear that beep, as you did, maybe, and the green light comes on. It's decided, this, despite the number going down, it counts as steady. Steady pull, yeah. It was from the middle of there to the middle of oh. there. So we've taken out about 120 millimetres of stretch. Yeah. It's definitely tight. Yeah. And it's just dropped 1290. Oh, it dropped all that much, actually. No. Nope. But it usually drops over the next quarter of an hour, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it to drop slowly just so that this stri this uh, here where the, um, that's where the splice, splice is. opened up the weave, that's what you're trying to close down and grip. Um, get it back to the length it was before you made the splice, basically. And the, one at the other end, obviously. Yes. That's... Uh, Nice and simple, really. Now we've built everything and got it all working. And compared uh -huh. to the idea of jerking it behind a pickup truck, this um, seems a lot we, more controlled and we actually have some numbers to go by. Yeah, we prefer this, although it is going to be interesting when it comes to the main mast. This is only for the mizzen. Yes, the line... We need higher loads and longer shrouds for the main. We did originally measure the, they will fit uh thing for the main mast. So if i just go down this end the far end we didn't want to um ruin the patio so it isn't held in place it was just resting on some tails and we've had to add the very attractive green buckets full of water to hold it down hmm. lovely and by the time we've uh <laughs> By the time we've got around to stretching our main mast shrouds, those green buckets will be full of rainwater. Oh, so, so it'll I be don't even... even need to get a hose. It'll be fine. This scale, I wish it wouldn't go off yes. quite as quickly. Um, oh, we don't you just have to put one more click in and then it... I don't need to read it. When no, it's... You have to, it's really not very good. So that's 618 and, and that's... 1200. So yeah, but we are basically doubling. doubling. Okay, that was uh, stretching another shroud. Shroud number six then. Um. I thought that was coming undone, but it's not. Well, about 300. 200, I'm afraid. I'm slightly worrying. 300 now. Four hundred. 
Mm, beer. Six hundred, seven hundred. What do you want? 950. Ah, that's much better. 360 here. Oh, well, that's fabulous. I did an extra wrap. Right, it's on one 100 now. One 200. Whoa, nearly one three. One 300 now. Okay. You nearly run out of length, haven't you? One four hundred. It's touched one four hundred. Yeah, that's as much as I can do there. Okay. Obviously, it tends to go down quickly when you first. I did do it, tie that down. to here instead oh. of taking it back to the anchor point. So oh. it went from a two to one to a four to one. Okay. So I had to pull much, much more into the pull along, but it was much easier to do so. Oh, that was good. So oh, it's slowing down. It's Stretching. Listen to that note difference. This is much less tension on it than this by yeah. that pull amount. That's good then, it's stopping at 1 200 at the moment. Oh. Okay. Right, okay. let's get the tape measure. Oh, yes. See how far it's moved. We're not, I don't think we're entirely consistent about the starting point really, hmm. but that's 1800, 180, sorry, 180 millimetres, millimetres. 18 centimetres. Or for old money, just over seven inches. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's, um, you don't never have your shroud that tight. Okay. If we do, we'll uh, bend the boat in half. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, these are our chain plate loops. And this is the one which has been in our garden wooden structure for, well, I'm not quite sure at the moment how long, but we'll let you know when we've checked. When Maybe we a couple the, of years even. In, I'm feeling it might be two years. <laughs> you see how tight that knot is? Beautifully, beautifully tight. And because it's been in the rubber, neoprene it's not got squashed in the way our first attempts did yes but when we see the ones we've just tied you can see that the the, the knot is really big and bulky but hasn't been pulled tight and although they started off the same this part is currently much shorter because the knot's going to pull through and um, become longer so if we go over to our testing frame You can see that we've got the knot here. Ooh. Dave's gone in a hole. A knot here, and then this is quite bulky. So when we first put the fresh one in, it only just peeked out a tiny bit there. So we had to do it in more than one stage, sadly, because we had to use a bit of um, lashing to attach it to the shackle. the shackle. We couldn't get the shackle it wasn't through the hole. Out far enough. So we've had to pull it a bit first and then take that off and actually the knot undid because it was only the really light line, this grey stuff. And then we could put the shackle through and now it's come up to as much as 1,400, the 1, same as... 400 kilo pull on that chain plate loop. The same as the shrouds. So... And it looks like the knot's nicely it, shrunk it down. It does. So that's oh. one done and the GoPro battery ran out, so not sure where we got to, but I'm pretty sure I got my maths wrong. We've got four more tied here that have not been stretched at all, and we are using the last shroud that needs to be stretched. So this is shroud number eight for the mizzen mast, but as well as these four, which we've got to put in here and tighten, we will do the same with that one 
and oh, the yeah. one at the very far end we as well. Those just they, they've been stretched somewhat because we use them as anchors, but the pull on them is only about 600 at the most, as opposed to 1400. We will take those out, do two swap. more, and then we've got um, we can swap these out and uh, get them all done. Hopefully, so, we get that done before it gets dark. <laughs> quarter to six, we'll manage that. All right, then. Bye. Jane's just cranking on the first stretch of this newly tied chain plate loop and you can see it pulling through here as that knot squashes and tightens. We needed to do a first pull with this strap in order to get enough length here to be able to get the shackle into it. We've got that now and Jane says she's reached her limit at, she got up to 680 kilos. Good job boss. This should be our last pull on our last chain plate. Boss has switched sides to see if that works better. She's up to 660 kilos and after that first stretch we've been able to put the shackle through the chain plate loop. Hmm, all that timber is moving a bit. I'm going to have to do some structural updates before we do our main shrouds. Okay, Jane's got to 700, so I'll just finish tensioning that. We've done all these chain plate loops then to 1,400. All our shrouds for the mizzen mast are now tensioned. You can see them all coiled up here, so we just got to do the final sort out of lengths, but we've got lowers. Then next longest is the two four stays, then the cap shrouds, and then the two runners. That's a good job done. I'll just get this last bit of tensioning done now, and we'll call that a day. Thanks for watching. Bye.